Good morning. My name is Colette Seymour. C O L E T T E. Seymour. S E Y M O R E. And I like to, I wrote a letter to my child on today for her birthday. And I like to read it. First of all, I'd like to give all glory and honor and thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is my Lord and Savior, and gives me strength. Taylor, this is so hard. Taylor, we love and miss you so much. Taylor, today is your birthday, and we all just want to say happy birthday, although it's not so happy because you are not here with us. The pain I felt 42 years ago while birthing you doesn't compare to the pain I feel on today with you missing out of our lives. The pain, the hurt, the agony is practically killing me. And not just me, your whole family, your friends, and all of your associates. When I cry, I cry so hard, I have to all hold my eyes in because I feel like every blood vessel is in them is gonna burst and they're gonna pop out of my head. I miss your visits, bringing me flowers, your calls. I miss your voice. You're encouraging me. Uh, you're encouraging me, you're coaching me. You're going on outings with me. And oh, how I miss asking you if you have any other friends to call because you would call me so much. I knew, you, I knew you did have friends, but you just like calling your mother. Oh, how I just yearn for, for that call today. I wonder where you are. Are you okay? Are you in danger? Are you sick? Are you hurt? My nights are sleepless with worry about you. I am lost without you. We all are your uh, sisters and brothers and nieces and nephews and cousins and friends, even people you don't even know, Taylor. And explicitly, your dear friends from the LGBT community, whom the Lord Jesus has used to create and wholeheartedly support the Finding Taylor Casey squad. And I do mean squad. <laughs> I do mean squad. Taylor, we love and miss you so much, and we need you back in our lives. God, please make it happen. We are relentlessly doing everything possible in our power to bring you home, Taylor. And as God is our strength, we will never stop looking and searching for you until you are found. We will never stop. And if you are in a position to help us, find you in any kind of way, please do. We love you so much. Love, Koki. That's a nickname Taylor gave me, Mom. And I just want to say, please help us find Taylor. Everybody, senators, governors, people, and, and just donate to the cause. Because uh, we really, we need a lawyer and a PI to um, get the go over to the Bahamas and help us to find Taylor. And I just want the senators to put light a fire under the people in the, in the Bahamas' feet so they can um, correctly search for my child and help to bring my child home. And that's it. That's all I have to say right now. We're going to have time for Q&A after. Next, we have Emily Williams, who is a friend of Taylor Casey. Uh, as well as went to the Bahamas. Hi, my name's Emily Williams. Um, I met Taylor over 15 years ago, and our friendship has been characterized by laughter, silliness, us reading each other, and a whole lot of dancing to Chicago house music on crowded dance floors. We were also committed to personal growth, stepping into more into our lives. We did landmark courses together, we attended Bodhi Spiritual Center together, and we always went to the Chosen Few house party picnic almost every year for the last decade. And that's why there was absolutely no hesitation when it came time to raise my hand 
to go to the Bahamas with Colette to figure out what has been going on. I went because Taylor is my sister and because I love her. It's been three weeks since Taylor's been missing. And one thing is abundantly clear. The only reason why anything is happening is because we're making it happen. Because everybody here, everybody standing behind me, Colette, all of you in the media, we're pushing this investigation forward. As soon as we set foot on that island, something didn't feel right. We knew things were off. We went from the airport right to the criminal investigation department of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. And we were met with a photo op, with a press conference. We weren't met with caring detectives that wanted to give us an update on where our loved one was. They couldn't keep details straight. They gave us misinformation. And then they tried to push us out. Just this week, they reported the same details that they told us three weeks ago. And we're demanding answers. We went there, we went to the Bahamas to get answers and we left with more questions. And we left early because we feared for our safety. That's how dire the situation is. They wanted us to believe that Taylor just left of her own volition. And we know that that's not true. Taylor wanted to be there. Taylor wanted to be in the teacher training. When we went there three weeks ago, we've gotten the same update just yesterday. They found the phone, but they only found the phone because Taylor's niece pinged it and gave them the location. They said that they sent out scent dogs, but it came up with nothing. They said that they sent divers and came up with nothing. And what have they done since? We haven't seen it. They haven't even reviewed the CCTV footage from the neighboring Atlantis Hotel. And so we are demanding answers. We're not gonna let this go. We're not gonna allow them to just push us to the side. I think they thought that that's what was gonna happen. I think they thought no one would care about Taylor. I think they thought that Taylor could disappear and we would just put our hands up and say, oh, what a tragedy. But that's not what we're gonna do. We're not stopping until we get answers and we wanna hear from them. They said tomorrow and that's when we wanna hear from them. And if we don't have answers, we're gonna keep pushing. And that's why we're calling on the senators, Dick Durbin, Tammy Duckworth, to put pressure on the State Department, to tell the Royal Bahamian Police Force to get the FBI down there right now and find Taylor. And we need all of your help to do that. So call the senators, please keep showing up. We appreciate it and we will find Taylor. E-M-I-L-Y. W I L L I A M S. Again, we'll have QA. Next, we have okay. Kennedy Bartley from Ma the Managing Deputy Ex of External Affairs for Mayor Brandon Johnson. Good morning. Again, my name is Kennedy Bartley. I am the Managing Deputy of External Affairs in the Mayor's Office, uh, and I'm so grateful to be uh, in the presence of, of Taylor's. Oh, yeah, I can spell my name. Uh, Kennedy Bartley, K-E-N-N-E-D-Y, B-A-R-T-L-E-Y. Uh, and again, I was sharing that I'm, I'm really honored to be in you all's presence for the resilience and love that y'all and dedication that y'all are showing towards Taylor. Unfortunately, the mayor couldn't be here this morning, but I share in his heartbreak uh, for Taylor's disappearance. Taylor, like too many black women and girls, particularly those of the queer uh, and trans communities, go missing and, and it seems that it's just the community that cares, but not today. You have the support of the mayor's office. Today we will be calling on our federal delegation uh, to do everything within their power to make sure that we are bringing Taylor home. Taylor should be here today celebrating her birthday and she's not, and that's a problem. And I want you to know that you have my commitment, you have the commitment of the mayor's office that we will continue to fight until Br Taylor is brought home, until justice is brought home. And once Taylor's brought home, We'll continue to make sure that all black women and young girls who far too often go missing and disappear, that they are, are met with the types of, of love and care and tenacious searching that they deserve uh, and that your family and your community, Taylor, has so well modeled 
for our city. So thank you all again. We are standing in solidarity with you all. Um, and so much love uh, to you, Taylor, and solidarity to your family. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Next, we have Lenny Mana Happenworth, 48th Ward. My name is Lenny Mana Hoppenworth, L E N I M A N A A H O P P E N W O R T H. I am the Alderwoman of the 48th Ward, and I stand here as an elected official with Precious Brady Davis. Can you spell your name too? My name is Commissioner Precious Brady Davis, P R E C I O U S B R A D Y D A V I S. We will be celebrating Taylor's birthday. And we are here to stand in solidarity with you, Mom, Thank you. and friends, Emily. Also, our elected officials and all of the advocates that have been working for too long because there is a gap. We know that there are too many trans black women who have gone missing, including my friend, Elise Mallory. And we are still waiting to hear the results of that investigation. This can't be another instance where we are waiting. It's been three weeks. We want answers. And we are calling on all levels of government. I stand here as a member of the LGBTQ plus caucus to say that we want more coordination. We thank our senators, including Durbin and Duckworth, for the work that they are doing right now. And thank you for the mayor's office for standing in solidarity with us. But it is not enough. We want answers now, and we cannot wait. So I thank all of you for being here. To Taylor, I say we love you. We're thinking of you. We will celebrate your life later today for your birthday. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. I have known Taylor for over 15 years and I've had the joy of sharing space with her beautiful family in her home as you have affirmed our community. That is what Taylor is. Taylor curates community. Taylor has brought so many in the LGBTQ community for so many years. Her heart has been dedicated to homeless LGBTQ youth, uplifting the marginalized. And I am so sick and tired once again, as we have to come together and urge for a member of our community to be found because of the plights and the blights against, in particular, black trans women of color. We will continue to fight and advocate for Taylor to come home. I was just at the White House and advocated for the White House to advocate and to do every resource, to advocate every resource that they have in finding Taylor. She is a beloved member of her community, and I hope that she comes home soon. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you, God bless you all. Thank you, thank you. Up next, we have Shannon Lynn Parker, the Executive Director of Brave Space Alliance. Good morning, uh, my first name is Shannon, spelled C-H-A-N-N-Y-N. Middle name is Lynn, L-Y-N-N-E. And the last name is Parker, P-A-R-K-E-R. -E I will start off by describing Taylor in three words, and that is first, daughter of Colette. Secondly, friend of everybody who is behind you and in front of you today. And third, fighter. What we know above all is that wherever Taylor is, she is fighting. And above all, she desperately wants to get home. Taylor wants to get back to the community that we so know and call our beloved community. I was approached yesterday and somebody asked me, Shannon, what are your thoughts when Taylor went missing? And my thought was, again, here we are again. We have black women who are constantly being deprioritized, particularly on the city's south and west sides. We have women globally across the world, more narrowly speaking, trans women whose lives are being discarded, who are being thought of as nothing but an afterthought. And again, 
here we are having to apply pressure when it should come as second nature and instinct to do what you know to be right. And that is to center the humanity of an individual who right now is missing and needs to be home. Again, we continue to send a resounding message across the waters, globally, locally, and nationally, that black women do not matter. Black trans women do not matter, but we're here to say right now, emphatically, resoundingly, and loudly, that we reject that, that black women matter, yes. that black trans women matter, yes. and we will not forget this situation. While Taylor may be missing, she is not forgotten, yeah. right? So we're gonna continue to apply pressure, we're gonna to continue to hold our elected officials locally, nationally, and globally yes. to accountability, and we will bring Taylor home. Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, back we have folks scoot in, scoot in. Back we have Marcus Payne, pastor at Lighthouse Foundation. They'll be the last uh, speaker, we'll do Q&A, and then we'll have a, a moment with uh, Zara to close out uh, the birthday celebration. Hello everyone, my name is Marcus Payne II, M-A-R-C-U-S-P-A-Y-N-E, and I'm the pastor of teaching and engagement at Lighthouse Church of Chicago. Lighthouse Church of Chicago is a predominantly black LGBTQ plus affirming church that welcomes all identities, and we are called by God to be passionate about justice and serious about the gospel yes. of Jesus. Yes. Taylor is a very committed member of Lighthouse Church Chicago, UCC. As an active member of our community, Taylor regularly assisted in leading our liturgies. Taylor was a point person behind the scenes on our hospitality team. Taylor regularly participated in monthly meals and community conversations that we had throughout the week. Our community is broken and distraught right now during this time. Taylor's fashion sense, her sense of curiosity towards the world, how she saw the world as beautiful and saw God through it is all something our community right now is missing deeply and truly. She is a vital heartbeat, heart pulse of our people today. Lighthouse Church has organized prayer calls for Taylor. We have shared out information across our various social media networks and communities because we want to bring Taylor home. The church does this by definition because we are seekers of that which is lost. We are in the business of searching and discovering, and we will do everything that we can to continue to search and discover and bring our sister home. Yes. We will continue praying and searching because this is who we are called to be and called to do. We remain committed to doing everything we can to help with this search. We invite you to join these efforts to be in solidarity with the family and friends as we continue to push this narrative that Taylor needs to come home echo the sentiments of everyone who's spoken before me that this needs to be taken seriously. I urge government officials, city officials, state officials, U.S. officials to tap in right now and do all they need to do to bring our sister home. This investigation needs to be taken seriously and the government needs to move with urgency. Jesus is the finder of those of which is lost and we believe and pray that Taylor will be coming home because we have our faith rooted in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we're going to have some time for some Q&A with uh, Mama C, who, who we affectionately call Mama C. <laughs> um, Emily will be the, so if there's any questions for Taylor's mother or Emily who was at the Bahamas, we also have a press packet with some information for new press contacts. So I'll we'll have that here. Um, should you need to reach out for one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews? Any? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just okay. Just okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So our understanding is that um, the FBI can only get involved when the Royal Bahamian Police Force invites them to be involved, and they have not yet done that. What they are saying online is they're saying that they're working with the FBI which is not true. They are currently working with the legal attache of the embassy in Nassau, um, but she has only observer status. She does not, she's not advising them in the investigation. She's not leading the investigation. She's simply observing. And so that's why we're asking the senators to put pressure on the embassy, to put pressure on the Royal Bahamian yes. Police Force to invite the FBI in so that we can find Taylor. Yes.
Yeah, we. You wanna, do you want to start with that? No, go ahead. I can't. We, um, we, we wanted answers. You know, they, um, you know, we found out about it on the 20th, on the 21st, and then we didn't have any answers. It was all questions. And so, you know, we said we have to go down there so we can actually find out what's happening. So we wanted to find answers. We got there and we didn't get any answers. We got zero answers. Um, and that's why we left to come back and say we have to we have to have a different strategy here because they're not moving, um, but we have to get them to move. Yeah. When you talk about strategy. You're, you're talking about keeping on pushing, keeping on legislators. Are there any plans to escalate, run this up the chain a little harder? Um, any other events planned in the coming weeks? And kind of what's next for this? Yeah, we're going to keep working on the legislators. I mean, they. they They've said that this is a priority and we want them to deliver on that. We appreciate that. We appreciate the communication with them thus far. We want to talk directly to the senators. We want to talk directly to the mayor so that we can tell them our story. They can hear it from us and then so that they can also, like I said, put pressure on where the pressure needs to be. And yeah, I think you've heard every speaker here say, we're not stopping. We're not stopping until we find Taylor. So yeah, there's going to be more events. Hopefully, hopefully they bring Taylor home this week or next week. They can do that. What's Let's just do that. I'm sorry. It indicates to me that um, how you do anything is how you do everything. And uh, the corruption within that department with Michael Johnson and him being suspended. Like, that's how I feel. You know, if he can be corrupt in that department and take bribes for um, dropping investigation cases, so that just gives me a grave concern about how did you treat my child's case? How did you treat, and I saw actually how they treated it when we were there. Nonchalant, lack of urgency, lack of care, just, just didn't care. You know, went to the Bahamas, I'm in the Royal, Royal Bahamas Police Force Department, with the crime investigation department and on their missing wall, it's a huge wall of missing people and Taylor wasn't even on the wall. The yoga retreat never put up uh, missing posters of Taylor. The attendees at the yoga retreat didn't even know Taylor was missing. You know, uh, how are you looking for my child? You know, people have to see that somebody is missing and they never put up posters or anything. Uh, they just, and, and I'm hearing from someone that was actually at the retreat with my child that they, they didn't do the things that they told us they did. So can you stand up for another case that for, for something else not in relation to Taylor's they, they What we understand is that they found voice notes that, you know, are related yeah. to a scandal. And they say that they're doing an investigation into how far this reaches. So we want to find out, too. We think that that's really important information. I mean, this person was over uh, the criminal investigation department who then also sees, um, who handles the missing persons cases. So, um, yes. yeah, we think that there's more information there and that it needs to be found out. So we're, we're curious to know what the results of those investigations will be also. Right. Yes. The cooperation when we got there, the young lady, Hannah, who called me and told me that Taylor was missing and she walked around searches for three hours and everything, she was there on the premises and they would not let me see her or speak to her. I did not understand that because if I call somebody and tell them their child is missing and you come to the country where I'm at, you're going to be the first person I want to see and talk to. They never let me see her or talk to her. They, but they said she's on the premises. She's in a class. So what is more important, a class, a class or American citizen that's a human being missing? I don't understand it. You have substitute teachers. So we, yes. we went to the we went to the ashram. Yes. We sat down yes. with the with the leadership of the ashram. We were there. Um, <clears throat> we had to press. We had to press in order to actually talk with. Um, other students who were in the teacher training with Taylor. Um, we did talk to a few guests where we found out more information. Um, but you know, it's, it's very similar to, you know, something just fell off while we were there. Um, and I think that actions speak much louder than words in this scenario. 
And the fact that they didn't, when I got there, we were reminded, we were pressured. Can't take any pictures. Don't disturb the guests. They're here on vacation. And I asked, I asked the colonel who's overseeing the investigation. I said, does everyone here, does everyone at this ashram know that Taylor went missing? And she told me, most, but not all. That says, that says almost everything about how seriously they're taking this investigation. If everybody who's staying at that ashram doesn't even know that Taylor went missing, how are they collecting the information that they need to find Taylor? And we were there almost a week after Taylor had gone missing. So if not everybody knew a week after, then who knew the day after she was last seen? So yeah, we went to the ashram, but did we get more information? Did we feel like they were meeting us genuinely that they also were doing all that they can to find Taylor? No, we did not feel that way. And that's substantiated by their lack of action in the very beginning. Yes. Um, why, why did you feel the danger? Listen, nobody thinks that they, nobody ever, nobody should ever have to be in this kind of situation where your loved one is at a yoga retreat with 14 other classmates has paid thousands of dollars to be there, has been there for two and a half weeks, and then just turns up missing, missing that she just vanished out of nowhere. We had to go and collect Taylor's things, go into her tent, see her Bible, see her affirmation cards, see the books that she was reading about black women's activism, fold her clothes, smell her scent. We had to go and do that. And then we were met with the lack of care by the people who should have been protecting her in that space. And so, yeah, we felt really unsafe. And we also could tell from the very beginning that something was off. As soon as we got to the Royal Bahamas Police Force, we could tell that something was off. So we're not surprised that Michael Johnson has now been suspended for corruption because we felt that while we were there. And we could tell by the way the details weren't lining up right by the disorganization so no we could tell we weren't safe in that place so that's why we left and that's why we came back yeah we were told by the royal bahamian police force that we should have an update with them by the end of this week and specifically friday and we have yet to hear back from them but we want that update it's been three weeks we want an update No, we don't, but we, we have an idea, but we won't speculate. We're going to give them an opportunity to actually give us an update. And well, she wants me to make a statement. That's what she said. And I'm like, Did, I didn't give you a statement. She said, um, no. And I said, why not? Because you didn't ask me for a statement. Because surely if you had asked me for a statement while I was sitting in the Bahamas, in your face at a table, I would have given it to you. I'm going to do anything in my power to make sure you find my child and send my child home. Why would I not give you a statement? You're lying. You didn't ask me for a statement then. Thank you. All right, we're going to close up. We will have an opportunity should anyone want to connect with um, Miss Colette Seymour, Emily uh, Williams, you can do so. Again, if you do not have a press uh, packet, let me know. It has new contact information. A lot of this work is new for us, so I really appreciate our local media just um, staying on top of it and being flexible um, with kind of their shifts of, of space. So thank you. We also will continue to work with our national media, but we want to thank you again. There's also folks, if you want to connect with family, loved ones, uh, we're going to do that. You can do that as well. And now, um, because um, we are grieving, uh, but we are also celebrating and honoring the life of uh, Taylor Casey, who we believe is still alive, and we want to bring her home. We have Zara B, a longtime friend of Taylor Casey's, who's going to... Um, close us um, out with a little celebratory uh, moment. You want to yeah, come closer. And Hello, everyone. So my name is Dr. Zara B. That's Z-A-R-A -A, and then B-E-E. -E. So I want to thank all of you beautiful and incredible people for being here today. This is such a monumental moment as we celebrate Taylor's 42nd birthday. It's a bittersweet occasion filled with both hope and heartache as we gather here in her honor, united by our shared love and concern for her.
First and foremost, I want to acknowledge all of you for your unwavering commitment and the tireless effort in the search for Taylor. Your dedication has been nothing short but extraordinary. In the midst of your daily lives, whether you're in a work meeting, preparing meals, attending school, or managing your countless other responsibilities, you all have continued to prioritize finding Taylor. Your resilience and determination inspire me every day, and I cannot express how much your support means to Taylor's family and me. Taylor has always been a beacon of life in our community. As an activist, she devoted over a decade of her life helping young people embrace their true selves. She was a woman of in 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 immense strength and integrity, always standing up for the rights of the LGBT community. Her work has touched countless lives and her spirit of compassion and advocacy continues to guide us in her absence. On a personal note, Taylor gave me a job at the Broadway Youth Center when I couldn't read or write. Her belief in me changed my life. Last year, I graduated with a doctorate degree in healthcare administration, and Taylor called me frequently to make sure I was completing my papers. Her encouragement and support was unwavering, and now I'm thrilled to share that I will be attending Harvard Medical School in August of 2024 oh. because of Taylor's encouragement and faith in my potential. Yeah. Yeah. Taylor's influence is extended far beyond me. She was a mentor and a guide to many, always ready to offer support and encouragement. She inspired so many young people to chase their dreams and to stand in their truth. Her legacy is one love, strength, and unwavering commitment to making the world a better place for everyone, especially those in the LGBT community. I recognize that there are many questions and frustrating surrounding Taylor's disappearance, the suspension of the Bahamas chief of police, and the, and the apparent mishandling of the investigation has left us all feeling a deep of sense of injustice and confusion. Yeah. However, in these challenging times, I encourage you to hold on to your faith. Believe that God is in control and he has the final say. And, it, and, and, and as it is often said, what is done in the dark will come to the light. We must trust that the truth will emerge and that justice will be served. So as we stand here today, I'm reminded of all of the importance of showing appreciation and love to all of those around us while we stand here and have the chance. Remember to give people their flowers while they are present to receive them because love is a powerful force and it is through our collective respect and care for one another that we find the strength to persevere. I want to take the moment to thank Taylor's family for their strength and grace during this time. Thank you all for being here and for your unwavering support. And let's stand together united in love for Taylor and our commitment to finding her. Together we will continue the search for justice and to honor her and her legacy by living out the values she so passionately embodied. Let us carry her light with us and let us guide her as we move forward in this journey. Now I would like to take the time and release the balloons in her celebration or let's celebrate her in whatever way we can on her 42nd birthday. Yes. Yes. Yay! <laughs>